So the iPhone XR is an odd phone, isn't it? At $750, it's not exactly the budget iPhone that everybody was really hoping for, but it does have a bigger screen of one of Apple's flagship devices, the iPhone XS. So, you know, what gives? The iPhone XR is about 75% of the cost of the XS and the XS Max. So is the XR, I mean XR, three quarters of the phone that the XSs are? I guess that's the question you need to answer if you're trying to figure out which device to upgrade to. So in the next few minutes, I'm gonna list out 17 differences between the XS and the XR to help answer that question. I'll tell you the one deal breaker that I have with the tenor that really pushes me towards the 10 S's. And here's a spoiler, it's not the screen, it's not the cameras. After all that, I'm going to give you a couple of guidelines for which devices to upgrade to based on which iPhone you're using. And Mobile Reviews, hey Monty and I, this cute little puppy, uh, base all our videos on actual usage. Give me a high five. We'll work on that. We do all this because we want you guys to have the best information before blowing thousands of dollars, well, on a consumable that you're probably gonna get rid of in two years, which is crazy. So if you don't care much about the differences, use the time code in the description section below to jump straight to the upgrade guide. Difference number one, you get larger storage on the iPhone XS. The base capacity for all three phones is the same at 64 gigabytes, but if you're always running out of space, the XSs offer 256 and 512 uh, gigabyte options, whereas the XR only has 128 and 256 six gigabyte storage options. Now, one of the things I kind of realized while doing this entire video was that paying $150 more for almost 200 gigabytes of storage is actually cheaper than giving Apple uh, money to iCloud storage. Difference number two, the screens. The iPhone XSs have an OLED screen that Apple has called Super Retina, whereas the iPhone XR has only an LCD screen called Liquid Retina. Now, what's the difference between Super and Retina? I kind of said liquid funny. Liquid sounds way sexier than, you know, Super liquid retina, liquid retina. To keep it short, everything looks better on an OLED screen than an LCD screen. But here's the kicker. You're actually not gonna know the difference unless you're staring at them side by side. And even then, you might not see the difference. I have a hard time seeing the differences. For example, if you get the iPhone XS, you're not gonna know that the photos that you've taken are gonna be noticeably better looking on your device than the ones taken on the iPhone XR, unless you've bought both devices, have taken the same photo, and are looking at them on the side-by-side, -side <laughs> on a side-by-side -side basis. It's like buying a TV at a big box chain. They do look different when you place them all side-by-side, -side, but the moment you go home, set it up, you won't know how much better or worse your TV actually is. Now with that being said, if you really wanted to compare, you can't even do that at Apple Store because the iPhone XR is on one table, the iPhone XS is on the other table, so you can't actually really compare them side by side. So the next two differences kind of deal with uh, the screen. Difference number three is that with the OLED screen, you get higher resolutions, which means your pictures and videos will look a little better on the iPhone XS. The only way I can show you how it's different, well, here's a microscopic comparison between the two devices. You can definitely tell that the OLED one has smaller pixels than the other. Difference number four is that, well, physically they have different size screens. The iPhone XS Max, this device has the largest screen followed by the XR and then the regular XS. And it's kind of odd to me to see that one of Apple's premium products being smaller than one of their cheaper alternatives. That doesn't quite make sense, does it? Now, overall, I found myself being impressed with the screen of the 10 uh, after spending most of my time with the 7 Plus. I was even more impressed with the screen of the 10s Max after spending a year with the 10. But when I started using the 10R, I was actually mildly annoyed because the bezels, bezels, bezels of this device, I still can't say that properly. The bezels of the devices are quite large and actually makes the screen feel smaller, even though it isn't. When compared to the iPhone 10, which is which kind of sucks. Now, most people aren't going to follow that progression of iPhone usage. So regardless of which device you're upgrading from, unless it's from a 10, which I don't know why you would, uh, the larger screens are going to impress you regardless. Just make sure that the cases that you buy for these gigantic devices can handle drops, you know, or improve usability, you know, cases like the Loopy case or the Mouse Limitless. Those two products, amazing. Difference number five is that the iPhone XSs allow for HDR playback. OLED screens generally have better contrast, which means that everything you see on your iPhone XS screen is gonna look a little better. The HDR comes into play when it comes to video playback from Netflix. Now, where does this ability for HDR playback come from? It comes from the next difference, which is the better contrast ratio. The XR has a contrast ratio of 1400 to one, which is better than the 1300 one of the iPhone 7s and 8s, but the 1400 to one uh, ratio pales in comparison to the million to one ratio of the OLED screens of the iPhone XSs. All these zeros just means that the whites on the OLED screens are whiter and the blacks on the blacks are blacker. 
Actually, the blacks are probably the most important part about the entire thing about contrast. So that's all the worthwhile differences for the screen. Now, screens seem to be something that Apple kind of fixate on uh, during their keynote, but in reality, most people aren't going to know the difference. I've just shown you that you can't even see the difference through my video. So don't base your buying decisions solely on the quality of the screen, because again, you won't know the difference unless you're carting two devices around like I am. The size of the screen is gonna make a difference. And I can tell you from personal experience, this 10s Max, the screen, awesome. Difference number seven, the iPhone XR does not have 3D touch. Now this was a little surprising to me as the big technological feature of the iPhone success was 3D touch, but it has been omitted from the iPhone XR. Now, in my mind, I thought that 3D touch was kind of a base feature of the iPhones. I would put on the same level as Touch ID and Face ID or whatever ID feature is gonna be used next to unlock our devices. One of the questions I do have for you is, when was the last time you actually used 3D touch? Because in writing this script, I was gonna make fun of 3D touch because I don't use it. Like, I don't hold all my apps to pop up, you know, the different app features. But then I realized after using the iPhone XR, I use 3D touch every single day. You know that trick where you can turn your keyboard into a mouse pad? That's 3D touch. So using my iPhone XR without 3D touch has been incredibly painful because I'm not very good at typing. Difference number eight, well, they're different sizes and weights. Well, this is kind of a no brainer. The iPhone XS, XS Max, and XR are all different sizes. However, the best handling iPhones from rank one to three, first one is gonna be the iPhone X, then the XS Max, and then the XR. Now, despite being larger, the iPhone XS Max handles better than the XR because the XR is actually quite thick when compared to the XS Max. The tiny bit of extra thickness is actually quite noticeable on the XR and becomes even more pronounced when you start using cases with the XR which means you need to get an even tougher case because it's gonna fall out of your hands even quicker. Now with the iPhone XR, the finish is a little different. It's got a bit more texture. It handles way better in my opinion. I like the edges of the previous generations of phones like the iPhone 6, 7, and 8, the anodized aluminum edges, I really enjoyed using. I'm not a big fan of the stainless steel ones. So if you're looking, if you are a person who just uses their devices by themselves without anything, the iPhone XR is gonna handle a little better. Difference number nine comes to the environmental protection. When it comes to overall toughness, the iPhone XSs are rated to IP68, which means they're fully submersible to two meters for 30 minutes. The majority of the waterproof cases that I've been reviewing over the years has this IP68 rating. The iPhone XR has an IP67 rating, which means it's rainproof, but Apple has it on the website that you can submerge it up to a meter for 30 minutes, which is a new one for me. Either way, Go ahead and drop your iPhone into a toilet by accident, but don't go swimming with your iPhone XR. You can't with the XS, uh, not with the XR. Difference number 10, there's no telephoto lens on the XR. In my opinion, the second biggest difference between the uh, XS and the XR is the camera. The XR is missing the telephoto, which uh, in my opinion kind of blows. Now before the 10 came around and ruined Apple's iPhone naming conventions, my go-to iPhone was going to be the plus size seven because it had the telephoto lens. Now out of all the incremental features that Apple has released over the last few years, the telephoto lens has actually been the one that has made the most difference in my day-to-day -day iPhone usage when it comes to photos. So when the smaller 10 was released last year with dual lenses, I was very happy because it meant that I could have two lenses, but still use a phone that didn't require two hands to use all the time. The lack of a telephoto lens on the larger sized iPhone is going to have a couple of ramifications when it comes to taking pictures. Portrait mode is a little hamstrung and shooting videos isn't going to be as fun. So if you've got an iPhone 7 Plus and you're looking to upgrade to the XR, uh, just be certain that you don't need that telephoto lens. Now the camera is really the only feature on the iPhone that gets a ton of love from Apple. I've been tracking Apple's upgrades over the years and the camera section is the one that has leaps and bounds of upgrades when compared to every other feature <laughs> in these devices. Now if you're trying to figure if there's any difference in quality between the 10R and the 10S's, well, my preliminary photo comparison shows that both cameras produce photo quality that are about the same. Which leads to difference number 11, and that I've already mentioned this, but I do have to point it out as a difference by itself, is that portrait mode on the iPhone 10R is slightly hamstrung, as on the rear camera, the 10R only has three portrait settings uh, when compared to the 5 on the 10S. The two features that are missing, stage and stage mono. And honestly, does anybody use any of those settings? I can't because my hair is black, uh, which means it does a great job of blending into the background. Now, portrait mode on the front facing camera is actually quite nice and is not hamstrung at all because it uses the True Depth ID camera, or that fancy IR camera that uh, Apple has. If you want to help me out for future videos, consider getting all your stuff through my links. Uh, this video is unsponsored. I do everything myself, video editing, takes a long time to finish these videos. 
Difference number 12 is that theoretically the internet's going to be faster on the iPhone XS because they have a gigabyte LTE modem. The XR has an LTE advanced modem and the difference between the two is going to be about 500 megabytes which seems incredible so fast but it only works if your wireless network supports a gigabyte LTE which I doubt because gigabyte speeds is in the realm of 5G and I don't think we're there yet. Now if you're really looking into the future going with the XS for the better modem might be a good idea but given that 5G I don't think is coming out in the next couple of years um, this basing your upgrade on that point is probably going to be mute. It's kind of like flying cars we all know that they're coming soon but you shouldn't remodel your home today to have hangar doors that open up from the roof of your home. Difference number 13 is that the battery is going to be better on the iPhone XR by a tiny, tiny little bit. Now, Apple's actually very cryptic with their battery life statements, you know, with, you know, it lasts 30 minutes longer than the iPhone 10, but they don't really quantify what the Apple iPhone is actually doing during that time. It's probably dimmed all the way down in airplane mode. So, you know, do those extra 30 minutes, are they actually going to be useful? But the iPhone XR has two hours of extra internet browsing over the XS Max, as well as an hour of extra video playback when compared to the XS Max. So if you're constantly finding yourself running out of power regardless of which iPhone you get. Oh, I just turned on the flashlight in my face. That kind of hurt. Um, if you're running out of power, um, consider getting just a fast charger. Don't base your iPhone buying decision based on whatever Apple says the battery life is. It just, just buy a fast charger. 50% in 30 minutes? Awesome. Difference number 14 is the bottom of the iPhone is symmetrical on the iPhone XR. And this is probably only going to matter for a few people as the bottom of the 10s is actually isn't symmetrical there's an antenna piece that goes where the headphone jack used to be is supposed to be <laughs> whereas the iphone 10r's bottom is completely uniform again is this going to bother many people probably not but it might matter to some difference number 15 is the iphone 10r is going to be cheaper to repair when it comes to overall repair costs the xr comes out on top so if you break a lot of iphones go with the iPhone XR or just get a really good case. Honestly, just get a good case. Uh, this device is probably going to be friendlier on your wallet because the screen is only uh, $200 to replace if you don't have Apple Care. It's like $279 for the uh, iPhone X and it's like $330 for the freaking iPhone XS Max, which is a lot of money to replace a screen. Difference number 16 is that the XR is way more colorful. When it comes to overall colors, the XR comes out on top, like just like, holy crap does it come out on top so many different colors. I'll be honest with you, I could almost, almost forego all the benefits of the iPhone XS's for yellow iPhone XR. I really would. I actually did buy one. It's still in their packaging because I couldn't get Apple Care for it, so I have to return it. I don't know why it didn't work. Now, if color is important to you, then well, the XR is definitely your uh, phone of choice. Difference number 17 is that the XR is cheaper. By a lot, actually. The XR is only $750. Only. The XS is 999 and this gigantic XS Max is 1099. Now with the XR, you're saving between 250 to 350 dollars. So you have to look at it. You know, the XR is only 75% of the cost of Apple's premium devices. So the question that I asked at the beginning of the video, do you think the XR is 75% of the phone that the XS is uh, are? What's my personal deal breaker? with the iPhone XR. And that is the, I've already talked about it, 3D Touch. I didn't think I was using 3D Touch on a day-to-day -day basis until I started using the iPhone XR and realized that that mouse pad feature is something that I use almost every session uh, with my iPhone. So being able to go, not being able to use that is a huge deal breaker for me. It's like I upgrade to a phone, but I really take a step back in terms of overall usability. Going back to the old method of using the magnifying glass has been awful for the day and a half that I've used this device. In many ways, it's like taking away my mouse on my computer and requiring me to use keyboard shortcuts to navigate around. It's like taking away my chef's knife and telling me they have to do an entire meal of meal prep with steak knives instead of my chef's knife. That, that'd be awful. And even during my photo comparison, accessing the camera on the iPhone XR took like a split second more and that kind of was frustrating for me because I was taking so many pictures and it was just so painful to sit there, push it, and really hope that it worked. Like, I don't know. Regardless, 3D Touch, missing it has been painful. All right, so here's the upgrade guide. I'm going to start with the iPhone 5s and then move incrementally to the 10. Now, before we get started, here are a couple of blanket statements, upgrade statements, we'll say. If you like taking photos, then go with the 10s. No, hands down, the second lens is going to be great. If you're on a budget and you want an upgrade, 
Consider getting the iPhone 8 Plus. Between the 10R and the 8 Plus, they're almost the same devices, almost. Uh, but the 8 Plus is gonna be much cheaper. If you work in damp places, then the 10S, well, it's IP68, which is full waterproofing, whereas in the 10R is just splash proof. If you have any of the iPhone 5s or the iPhone SE, uh, any new iPhone is gonna be better. Specifically, you can be very comfortable to go with the iPhone 10R because all the features that are missing aren't actually found on your generation of the iPhones. The biggest change for you is gonna be the removal of the Touch ID button and the power button will have moved slightly. If you're worried about size, your better option is to go with the iPhone XS. Now, regardless of which device you're getting, you're going to need to get a good case because how you're using your iPhone is going to be completely changed because of the gigantic size of these devices. And when it comes to the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, the iPhone XR is going to be a worthy upgrade. If you're moving from the 6 Plus to the XR, the size difference won't be as shocking as the 6, but it will still be noticeable. Again, the only thing you'll be missing is the Touch ID. If you are using the 6 right now and size is a big deal, you only have the choice of the 10. S, regular size. For the iPhone 6s and 6s Pluses, this is where the upgrade tips get a little murky because the iPhone 6s is where the first iPhones to have 3D touch. So if you do upgrade to the iPhone XR, that's one feature you're gonna be missing. And I've talked about that way too much in this video. Now, based on my speed test with iOS 12, the iPhone 6s is actually gonna behave quite well compared to the older generation. So you technically could hold out for another year if you want to just save yourself a few bucks. But if you can't, get the XR if you don't use 3D Touch ever or are willing to sacrifice 3D Touch features for the cheaper iPhone. For this generation of the iPhones, you will notice a big leap in terms of video recording capabilities. If you do enjoy shooting a video, then the 10s is with its telephoto lens, with the 4K at 60 frames per second and the super slow motion, it's gonna give you a bunch of extra tools to shoot even better videos. If you have an iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, you could definitely hold it for another year, maybe another two. Apple still sells these devices, but I wouldn't actually upgrade to the 7. Your minimum upgrade, um, if you're going, if you wanna be really cheap, will be an 8 because of Bluetooth 5.0. The 7s still have the old 4.2 chip, so if you're, you're basically going two steps backwards with an upgrade to the 7. Now, if you are using an iPhone 7, you could go with either an iPhone 10 or a 10s. If you're using a 7 Plus, you should definitely Definitely go with the 10s Max uh, because you've probably gotten used to using portrait mode on your device. Going with the 10s Max means that you have full access to all the different portrait mode and portrait lighting features, whereas in the 10r's portrait mode is just a little hamstrung. If you are planning on upgrading from an iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, you do realize that these devices are only a year old, right? 8 Plus is basically an older version of the 10r, so there's kind of no point in upgrading. Uh, if you own the iPhone 10 and you're thinking about upgrading, why? Why would you do that? Why would you waste the money? So that's all I got for this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down there in the comments section below. If this is the first time you're watching one of the videos, I do encourage you to click subscribe. My channel primarily focuses on product reviews, but when the new iPhones come out, I do these uh, buyer's guides to help people you know, figure out how to spend their money.